all right so welcome back uh guys happy new year uh initially i was gonna record this video for my community only uh but i decided the information in here would be great for the general public and people who are not even uh in my community and by my community i meant actually my paid inner circle um i have my free community uh if you don't know about it i will uh, put the link to that community in the uh, in this video below you should absolutely go and join because there's a ton of free value that i have been providing and so there's already value waiting for you but going into 2023 there is like a ton of things that i will be doing in that community so you want to be a part of that um we're going to be probably 20 25 minutes into this video uh talk about some very very key things number one are uh, the things that the data is pointing to um you know the the, the economic uh, data the 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 numbers pointing towards a recession and all of that uh, and then we're going to look at what it is you can do uh, because we already can feel sort of like the wave uh, or, or the, the effects of what the the recession wave would be like some people i think about uh, a week or two ago in a single day two members of my community sort of reached out to me and said to me that they had been laid off or they had been fired for lack of a better word right so this thing is really happening like it's not a joke it is happening all right so welcome to the video if you find it useful i would encourage you to like um you know drop a comment in uh the comment section share it with somebody and subscribe to my channel and turn on those post notifications because i will do a lot more of this kind of value adding video all right let's get right into it so i spent the last maybe three weeks um, looking at all of the reports uh, from the biggest financial institutions in the world. I'm talking JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, um, you know, Apollo, uh, BlackRock, and all of those other guys. And I've gone through maybe about 500 to 800 pages of research, um, I mean, of reports, sorry, just doing my research as to what's happening or what does the economic numbers look like in the year 2023 now again uh to a large extent even though this is not like a typical crypto uh video or content nothing i'm about to discuss here will constitute financial advice i am just sharing information that i found you i find uh useful to me and i think will benefit some of you as well uh for those of you already in my community this is a must have you want to um keep this video bookmark it and come back and watch it over and over again so that it will benefit you now we are all expecting a recession and i think i've spoken in different uh platforms about you know why this is happening uh we just recovered from i don't even think we are fully recovered from a global pandemic but we just got out of covid in 2020 2021 um, during which uh, there was a lot of stimulus and money printing to boost the economy because for no fault of anybody's uh people were asked to stay home and they couldn't work and it really slowed the global economic output uh, so with those monies that were printed out of thin air which again is the problem with our current financial system but i'm not here to talk about that and i'm not trying to stir up any form of controversy um that that needs balancing so after what we call after what financially not we after what fi financially they call uh quantitative easing they also need to do what is called qt which is quantitative tapering uh which is when they start drawing out all of that free money that they printed and put into the economy out of the economy and then of course with things like the ukraine and russia war and other macro uh, economic things like what's happening with the BRICS. if you don't know about the BRICS, that's brazil russia um india china south africa and now saudi arabia is looking to join uh trying to move away from the almighty dollar which is sort of the universal uh currency uh, of the world or the trade currency of the world and saying they want to start trading with gold ghana my beloved country <laughs> um also announced that they will start selling their gold 
uh, they will start doing trade using gold and not the dollar and all of those other things that's happening with the russian war um as the western world started putting all sorts of like injunctions and banning them from things they also started pulling away from giving the world energy and russia supplies a huge percentage i'm not very sure of the number but i think it's above like 30 percent of the world's energy or like energy to europe and america or something like that so all of those things have come together to create what we're seeing as the recession um and so i mean you can read more about it that there are experts who have spoken deeply into this i'm just giving you sort of my little uh knowledge on it and that's what we're expecting now um let me take you through like I've, i'm i'm saving you over 500 pages of reports financial reports that if you don't speak finance because finance itself is a language guys if you do not speak finance then you're going to have a lot of trouble so let me let me summarize it all for you i've picked like the top five or so for us to go through goldman sachs summary of the entire outlook for 2023 is that they expect low global growth of 1.8% in 2023 thanks to the negative catalyst of a bumpy reopening in China. China is now becoming or has become a major player in the world in terms of production and manufacturing. And so with what is happening with COVID and news, even though the media has not really put it out, shows that COVID has sort of resurfaced in a very, very terrible way in china um and so with that kind of bumpy reopening and not having like full um you know workforce in place uh and a recession that is happening in europe i'm, I'm shocked that goldman sachs didn't say anything about the us but banks are consistently lowering their growth forecast through the year but goldman's is now higher than the consensus uh and so they think that there will be very very low growth in the economy in 2023 JP Morgan sums it up to say that 2023 um, will be a bad year for the economy, but a better year for the markets. Uh, but don't worry about a, has a housing crash. That's what they are saying. Again, uh, none of this. This is just data. This is just forecast. This is just prediction. Uh, the market can decide to go the very opposite direction. So they are saying that ho home prices would be supported by the limited stock in housing. And I'm sure JP Morgan is speaking more of the American market. Um, housing inventories are still less than half what they were during the 2008 recession so that's from jp morgan blackrock is saying that um things are looking really terrible uh, they say the great moderation the four decade period of largely stable activity and inflation is behind us the new regime uh the new uh, regime of greater macro sorry the new uh, regime of greater macro and market vo volatility is playing out Essentially, they're saying the game has changed and everybody needs a new investment playbook. And they speak a little bit into details about how to play equities and becoming comfortable with living with inflation above 2%. And again, this is for the American economy. If you're watching this from Africa, our governments are not giving us this type of data, by the way. Um, I mean, yeah, I know, I know some governments try to give these types of things, but again, it's not as available and easy to find as it is. So I, I, I needed to use this because most of the, the African economies are affected by the U.S. and the European economies because everything we do um, goes back to those economies. The Deutsche Bank expects that infl infl uh, inflation will be tamed quickly with a CPI forecast of 4.1 in the U.S. They also believe that the market has already priced in current inflation levels and equities will get off to a good start in 2023 if inflation continues to decline if is the big word there uh, so they are they are the, the, in fact of all the reports i read i think they were the only ones who sort of sounded a little bit positive for the equities market um but still you can see right here that they are having major conversations about the recession that is coming and what can be done about it and then apollo global management sees um uh, deflation in action uh if you look at the sharp decline of this graph right here um it looks for truck transport cost and air freight prices but while inflation is headed down it won't happen quickly apollo says that historically it takes two full years for inflation to go from its peak back to the two percent level and that is for apollo now 
Everybody who knows anything about recessions knows the things that it is characterized by. The first thing that is characterized uh, uh, by recessions, or I mean, sorry, the first thing that recessions sort of bring to the market is massive layoffs, right? Like a lot of people get dropped out of their jobs. For, for lack of a better word, a lot of people get fired. Uh, and in 2022, we already caught like a little wind of what this can look like. And you can see the insane number of people who have been laid off. Uh, Peloton laid off 2,800 people. Kavana laid off 2,500 people. Robin Hood um, uh, laid off about 342. Funko laid 258 people. Of Duma, 310. JP Morgan, 500. Coin, uh, Coinbase uh, laid off 1,100 people. Um, and on and on and on it goes. If you look at big tech, even scarier, um, tech layoffs has been absolutely insane. Um, Tesla, about 29,000 people. Uh, it, it, this is like madness, guys. If you look at the numbers, Facebook at one point laid off 11,000 people at a go. Um, and so if you are in any way thinking about really doing something uh, better for yourself in 2023, that consider the possibility that even if you are gainfully employed in my part of the world where we come from people will say god forbid or, or i cancel it in jesus name <laughs> but again i'm not have to, i'm not here to have a religious conversation we're having a data conversation so consider the possibility of about two or three things it's very possible that you might get laid off unless you're a super high value person who can perform multiple tasks because once companies start to downsize so that they can um, save the operational cost of the various businesses because of the economic recession what they are going to do is they're going to be keeping people high, super high value people who can do the job of three or four people and then they're going to sack the three or four people and keep that one person so it's very very possible that you might get laid off or get fired um if you do not get fired and you're gainfully employed there's a possibility that either your salaries are going to delay in coming unless of course your business has prepared for this type of recession or they might actually reduce your salary so any of these things are super possible and it's rather better to be prepared for it than not to be prepared for it at all all right so these things are coming and this was very clear in what happened in 2008 in a single day in 2008 during the recession over 60,000 people lost their jobs. Again, this video is not supposed to scare you. It is rather supposed to prepare you for what's coming ahead. So in the midst of all of this, what should you be doing? Guys, I want to introduce you to the idea of something called still, uh, sorry, scale stacking, right? Scale stacking. Now, skill stacking is the idea that one skill will not save you anymore. It's very, very important that uh, you grow both horizontal, uh, horizontal and vertical vectors of your skill acquisition and knowledge acquisition as well. Um, and you need to sort of pick up skills in different, different uh, phases of value creation, uh, you know, in leadership, in trade and marketing and sales, communication, both oral and written marketing, brand advertising and creative. You, you need to have unique skills in all of these areas. Um, one of the things I share with my community, and that's the reason why you should absolutely join my the community is this um, the back end of the internet is code and the front end of the internet is media uh, if you are able to master any of the elements in any of these domains you should be fine regardless and irrespective of what's happening across the world uh, now thanks to no coding platforms like you know website building Website builders like the Waze, uh, Elementor, you know, um, all of these ones, even AI that is allowing these things to be done in a very, very easy way without needing code. If you look at a platform like Glide, you can actually build a mobile, uh, uh, what you would call it, app without needing any form of code, simply doing drag, uh, drag and drop and utilizing pre-existing uh, code in GitHub depositories and stuff like that. So you better start positioning yourself and this is not limited to any industry. This is like a global, this is like a human universal. You should tap yourself in and start 
skill stacking. All right. Um, the other thing is, and this is something I really, really want to introduce you guys to some part of the, of the, of the, the, uh, uh what do you call it? The, some part of what I have on this presentation or on this particular slide is off, but it's the idea of solopreneurship, right? Solopreneurship is um, creating value online as a one man business, um, as opposed to like running a team as an entrepreneur. So solopreneur versus entrepreneurship. And the idea is if, if there's a possibility that you might get laid off or you are already laid off or you are not even fully employed yet, then this is probably the best way to go. It is to use the internet or digital um, technologies as leverage to bring your expertise and knowledge to the marketplace, start solving problems for people and be able to make money doing that. And in a recession, it is actually probably the best time to start doing something like this because in a recession, People are looking for answers. People are desperate. And if you're really genuinely and authentically there to solve their problems, then they wouldn't mind taking their last dollar and saying thank you for that. So maybe you should consider solopreneurship. I do both. I am both an entrepreneur in that I have businesses that runs with a team that I've built for like the last decade. And I also run a solopreneur business with all my value creation, my community, my courses, my books, um, and every other thing that I do. So that's another thing you might want to consider. And I teach and share a lot of information on that in my community. Link is below in the video. I mean, below the video right here on YouTube. Now, uh, I want to bring your attention to something because the entire world has been speaking about chat GPT. Uh, and chat GPT literally has become the poster child for how AI can become useful in everyday life, right? That, that's a, that's like an awesome freaking idea. And anybody who has played around with it is already excited, but I am a deeper guy. Like I, I've, I've been following chat GPT from version 1.5. Uh, and I have been talking about AI displacing jobs and making work easier for like the last seven, eight years. Um, you know, uh, traveling around the world in all my speaking gigs and all of the stuff that I have been doing. I did a three hour training for my paid group uh, on how you could use AI for profits and life hacking to increase your productivity and to do a ton of things. Out of this training, one of my community members uh, used AI from beginning to end, created a YouTube channel use the AI to generate his scripts, use the AI to generate his video, use the AI to edit it, and then brought it out to YouTube. And as I speak to you, he has a YouTube channel that already has hit his first thousand views using AI. So I decided to show you this because I have decided to develop this into a full blown course that I'm calling the AI dollar printing course that's going to be available very, very soon, maybe in the next couple of weeks, that is going to guide anybody who does not even have the skill. So I am. Um, I brought this not to sell my course or to tell you about the course, but to say to you now, just a good understanding of AI and knowing how to use it could actually be the ultimate skill. But there's no such thing as ultimate skill because the world keeps growing so fast. And so maybe the ultimate skill is meta learning, knowing how to learn, knowing how to leave the things that are redundant and not serving you, and then going on to the next thing that is seven um, value in the marketplace and quickly learning it. But at this point, AI and knowing how to speak to AI, communicate with AI, give the right command prompts so that you can get the best out of it is, a, is an ultimate skill. And I have used this in a live class to create a company from scratch until our first clients paid for our first product. And it is in this particular video. So if you're in my paid community, you already have the video and you know about what I'm talking about. If you want to access my paid community, it's $500 a year where I teach everything that I use to make money online from crypto to my online value creator business, selling my knowledge and expertise, building community, selling digital products. The entire thing exists in my inner circle and it is going 
for five hundred dollars now that five hundred dollars is also again a discount that i'm running for the first month of the year after which it goes to a thousand dollars so if you're interested in my paid community you're just seeing this video then of course you can click the link in the bio join my free community in the free community you will get direct access to my personal telegram and you can reach out or you should wait for the announcements on when I open access to the inner circle again, and then you can jump in. So learning how to use AI could literally become the difference between you and anybody else on the value marketplace. All right. So skill stacking, uh, and then of course the solopreneurship business idea and using AI to literally print dollars out of thin air. Now, let me as of course a lot of people who follow me know me as one of the leading voices in cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology on the continent even though i don't live in the continent anymore and i live in dubai but of course a bigger base of my followership is still in africa so i wanted to go through 22 lessons that i have learned in um crypto in 2022 um a lot of this was actually compiled by somebody that i learned a lot from and it's very important to give credit um so md on twitter um thank you for putting a lot of this together i resonate a lot with them and i added a few of my own thoughts so that i will share it with you guys um again i wanted this to be as value packed as possible and i hope that so far it has been value added so let's go straight through it number one DeFi is the only way forward if you don't know what DeFi is DeFi is decentralized finance is basically all of the financial services that you have in your bank and savings and all of that so your ability to take loans uh collateralized loans um you know uh staking keeping your money and making more of it all of those savings and all of those things is what we call DeFi. now most of this year's major collapses were most of last year's major collapses were a reflection of human nature not the underlying technology ftx celsius block five voyage genesis and all of those other companies that collapsed it was human error or human greed but the need for DeFi is super clear now because there's no point in just creating currencies and tokens out of thin air if we cannot put real utility and real use case in a way that is sustainable um, around it so DeFi is the way to go second nothing is too big to fail luna was a top five layer one fts was a top three exchange don't let the size of a project mask its vulnerabilities if the mechanism is fundamentally flawed size isn't going to prevent an inevitable collapse that leads me to the next point if a mechanism is broken it won't work no matter how big it gets make sure a mechanism is sound before you invest and don't let the market caps blind you from potential flaws even billion dollar market caps can go poof four don't huddle blindly don't hold your projects blindly don't fall in love with your bags this is something i warn my community about over and over again always reevaluate your thesis on a regular basis for example every month go through your portfolio and ask yourself why am i holding this token if i wasn't holding would i buy this token right now so this is absolutely something that um i do with all of the signals that i give to my community that are preparing in this bear market to go and get insane profits in the bull market there are projects i bring that i cancel out if i find new information contrary to what i used to believe all right so it's important you do this for yourself if you answered no to question b then you should reevaluate your position remember holding the token is the same as buying at that given moment opportunity cost do you understand me five it is clear that algorithmic stable coins don't work to date we haven't seen this model succeed for any substantial amount of time every single attempt has failed ust being waves with their usdn usn anything that is not backed by real world assets in a stable coin economy is not sustainable you need to fully understand a stable coins design before putting a cent in not your keys not your coins we saw what happened with fts the famous crypto phrase has proven true once again with the downfall of many crypto exchanges and centralized lenders this year the importance of self-custody is more pertinent than ever get yourself a code wallet it could be ledger it could be trezor or anything at all that you have researched and you trust timing the top 
or the bottom is impossible. Almost everyone that tried to predict the top was wrong. Why? Because crypto is beholden to the macro environment. No one has an edge on macro. Implement risk management and stick to a plan which doesn't require time in the market. I am doing this with my community, my paid community, especially now. Uh, my free community, I've given them certain projects and I've given them entry point ranges. We're not trying to time the bottom of the market. Some people are calling 10,800 as the bottom of the market. I think we could see the lows of 13,000 dollars per bitcoin that is that's what we're talking about here but that i do not care about that i've given my community a range from which we'll start going into our altcoin positions and our bitcoin acquisitions as well to help us position ourselves for the bull run now don't try to time the market guys nobody has a crystal ball to see into the future chase real yield and not fake emissions this is insane because in like four five six months ago every single coin that popped up on pixel was promising 1 million percent yield 3.8 million percent yield and just insanity and people were pouring their money in there as if they were crazy do not do this to yourself. You need to ask yourself a very good question when it comes to APRs. What is the source of the yield? Is the yield sustainable? Is the strategy delta neutral? Or does it involve a, a directional bias? So if, if the token should start falling in price, will the yield be sustainable? And finally, finding real yield should be your real priority. And that's lesson number eight. Number nine, be beware of single points of failure or what we call systemic, systemic risk. Luna's entire mechanism relied on the UST adoption. When it depegged, Luna collapsed with it. Identify if a project relies on a single variable and beware aware of the associated risk. Number 10, do not worship cult figures. Uh, SBF who is Sam, uh, Duquan who is Luna, Zuzu and all of the guys were lauded for their genius and it blinded a lot of people's views on their respective projects. When they failed, their tokens went down with them. No one in crypto is untouchable. Number 11, rotating isn't the same as taking profits. Uh, this one was uh, um, uh, Miles' uh, experience. He got caught in this trap a few times. He made a 10x uh, rotate into another project, made a 5x, rotate a second time into another project. That project drops 50%. He has lost all of the 15x that he made. And so you better actually have a straight taken profit um, framework. For me, I have told my guys, we always have four levels of take profit. We enter at a certain point. There's take profit one, take profit two, take profit three. And I give the specific price points at which you should take profit. And it's very important that you do this for yourself as well. Number 12, ecosystem diversification, uh, diversification is vital. If you were in Luna, but also had exposure to Astro and UST, you may have thought that you were diversified. The same if you were holding FTT token and Solana, but when one token collapse it dragged all of them so look at narratives and look at different players if you are actually looking to diversify don't go into one player's um you know ecosystem of products and say you are diversified because if that ecosystem crashes you're gone with it number 13 don't lock tokens now i'm a little bit against this but to some extent i agree if you are playing the super long term game then you can go lock your tokens but know the risk that comes with it unless again your time horizon is extremely long always prioritize having liquidity over holding or getting extra yield uh this one i personally have also learned the hard way i was a little bit affected by luna um and i had some of it staked and locked somewhere and it really affected me because at the time i wasn't even able to unstake talkless sell now now that we have the rise of liquid staking, you have more options than before. Number four, liquidity is skin. There's always going to be more opportunities in crypto. Better projects with real use cases are being built um, now more than ever. So always preserve your capital and grow your capital as much as possible. Liquidity is skin. 15. Confirmation bias is your worst enemy. You are researching a project. You search it on Twitter. Everyone is bullish. You join the Discord. Everyone is bullish. That's enough research. It must be a good project. No. Go a step further and research the downsides. This is self-explanatory. 16. 
The crypto echo chamber does more damage than good. Social media like Twitter and YouTube reflect market sentiment. Creators play into this for clicks, but the reality is most people are bullish at the top, embarrassed at the bottom. Don't follow the head. Do the very, very opposite. When people are greedy, be afraid. When people are afraid, be greedy. A lot of people are afraid now. And so this is the time that I am actively preparing my community and we are being extremely greedy and getting in when everybody is scared. That is what people would actually, not VCs, that's what should actually be called smart money. Smart money should be the guys who were greedy when everybody was afraid, um, not the guys with the big money because we can see that VCs, you know, anyway. 17, be wary of influencers. Use Twitter and YouTube as a starting point to gain new perspective, not as the final step in the research funnel. Many creators in this space have a vested interest. They've either been paid or they are backers of projects secretly. Some of them, even the projects are for them and they are acting like they are just influencing for it or they've discovered an alpha. So be very, very careful. Learn how to snuff them out. I've been living in Dubai and be me meeting a lot of crypto influencers and this is so true. You would be absolutely scared if you actually had some of the insider information that we get. So don't just follow somebody blindly on the internet. Always do your own research. 18. When the stars align on an investment, back your gut and go in hard with conviction. Now, I'm going to give a free you know, no financial advice. For instance, this would be like an ICP for me. Internet computer is something that the stars have aligned when it comes to my research and everything. And I'm going in very, very heavy looking at my entry range and my take profit points. And I'm not joking. Now with Miles, many times this year, he had a good project, good narrative. He was so, super confident, but he didn't go in very, very heavy. And so when it paid off, he was underexposed. And if, and is, is so instead of doing more, more, he did less. 19, learn from people who are ahead of the curve. There's an abundance of knowledge on Twitter. Um, learn from people smarter than yourself and implement this newfound knowledge in your own trading or investment. Don't copy blindly. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a scripture that I really, really love and I'm going to put it in here um, for anybody who actually wants like a framework. It says that it is uh, the glory of God to conceal a matter and it is the honor of kings to search it out. So do yourself the honorable thing of once you get this kind of information from people who are ahead of you, searching it out. Never take anything, copy and paste and just go do it. 20, don't do crypto alone. And with this, I am inviting you once more, join my community. You have a group of people, the free one, by the way, guys, I don't, I don't really like if you, I, I'm not trying to sell anything to you, join the free one. You would, you would be part of a community where information hits you and you get to, you know, discuss and, um, uh, it's, it's really, really better to be um, in, 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 in the midst of people. Um, many of retail friends quit crypto this year because they were operating solo. Avoid the burnout, join a community, <clears throat> start a research group or join a research group, attend conferences and meetups. Your network is everything when it comes to crypto. And again, when I moved and I became a resident in Dubai, this has become clearer than ever. 2021, Always think ahead. If we're chasing old narratives this year, odds are you ended up as somebody else's exit liquidity. Always approach the market with forward thinking and an open mind. And right here, I will tell you, I strongly believe that in the next bull run, AI projects will lead. So you better start getting some exposure to AI projects. I believe that DEXs that survived the bear market would also come into heavy play. I also suspect that non-custodial wallets like trust wallets uh, would, you know, MetaMask, if they ever do get a token and there are rumors that that might happen, those type of projects will come into play. So you better start thinking into narratives ahead and not behind you. Um, always approach the market again with forward thinking and an open mind. Perpetual Dexes, Arbitrum, they are tools, are examples of new narratives that exploded this year. You want to start paying attention to. And finally, in 20, 22, 22 lessons in 2022 in crypto, there's more to life than crypto. It's very easy to get caught up in the game throughout the year. 
I experience both euphoria and anxiety. Distance yourself and take breaks. And that's the reason why I love my work because it allows me to move away from my wallet, move away from my portfolio. You know, sometimes now I'm able to go two weeks, three weeks. I've not checked my wallet or anything. I have a pulse on the market. I'm getting the necessary information, but I'm not opening my portfolio every five minutes like I do in a bull run. Uh, because last year, for instance, I was on tour. I was traveling. I was speaking in conferences. I was tired half the time. And it gave me the time to move away. So when people were making decisions out of anxiety, because they're looking at their wallets all the time, I didn't fall for any of those things. So go out, unplug, go do something else. This is a reason why you should have multiple sources of income. So for me this year, for instance, I am going to be heavily invested in bringing a lot of value and solving a lot of problems for a lot of people through my digital products, my courses, my community, my ebooks and stuff like that. And so that is going to be taking me away a lot and allowing me to create value elsewhere so that regardless any respect of what's happening in crypto, I am not always on edge. Now, as tough as it was from a price perspective, because we fell from $69,000 Bitcoin to now 16,000 Bitcoin with people even expecting it to go as low as 10,000 there were many immensely valuable lessons that we could learn from crypto in 2022 if you lost money in the terra crash in the fts crash in any project in voyager celsius any of the projects and companies that collapsed very very sorry i lost some good money as well but let all of us let us all of us look at it as let every one of us look at it as the cost of tuition your newfound strength and knowledge will hold you in good stead for the next cycle and i hope these 22 lessons will stick with you and you're going to be able to implement them uh, finally these are just for my community by the way these are things that you can look forward to in the coming year my products for the year i'm going to be laser focused on really helping the group of people that i want to help so of course my flagship um golden goose project uh, is my inner circle for the bear market millionaires where i have researched based on my performance in the last bear to bull market over 20 projects in narratives that has the potential to do 100x to 1000x and could turn even small amounts of money to potentially life-changing wealth and if you want to learn about this i will put a link to the presentation for you to go and watch the entire presentation and you can make a decision from there i would be launching pajamas millionaires 2.0 which was a book that i wrote and grew a community around in 2020 during the COVID um you know pandemic and people were stuck home and they didn't know how to make money i started teaching ways in which you can start making money from the internet in the comfort of your pajamas and make money even whilst you're asleep i'm bringing it back heavier and better because a lot of the things i taught in 2020 does not work anymore and probably one of the biggest products i'm launching this year is the ai dollar printing course that can teach anybody can who can go from i don't have a skill to i just made my first one thousand or ten thousand dollars using ai only and then um for one of the courses that has been asked of me i'm a three times tedx speaker i've spoken on about a thousand plus stages in my decade plus career across about 40 plus countries and so a lot of people love the way i speak if you listen to this presentation for instance or watch this video and you love how i spoke then these are the things i'll be teaching as a full-fledged course not just the act of public speaking but the act of branding yourself and speaking to sell because that's what a lot of people miss a lot of people do not know how to turn a video on themselves and convince people that they have value to offer and get value back so that course would also be coming and then i would be launching the hundred thousand dollar information locked in your brain which is a step-by-step -step guide on how you can monetize yourself in this recession your knowledge and your expertise and finally I will launch a mini course. These are like my smaller, um, you know, tiny bit courses, how to make money in crypto with zero dollars investment, because a lot of retailers are coming into the space, especially in a recession when people are being laid off. This is the kind of thing that they need to allow them to start building capital to get any form of exposure 
in positioning themselves for the coming years. And then I will launch two new books, probably more because I'll be giving a lot of um, free value, you know, simple things that people can do. I'm working on something that I might give out for free called the DM Seduction um, Blueprint, which anybody who has less followers, even if you have less than 500 followers on any social media platform, you can use DMs or people's inboxes doing it the right way to be able to make between a thousand dollars plus every month and so those are other things that might come along the way um, and these are my 2023 projections i would of course be looking at this over and over again still taking a lot of data and information and i might record maybe going forward quarterly or maybe even monthly what the forecast should be and what you should be focusing on. And so if you found value in this, um, like I said, drop a comment. Let me know that you appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the post notifications. I am on a 365 um, by 365 challenge. So 365 videos for the next 365 days. And this is video one for day one and so every day i'm going to be dropping a video it's a challenge i've given to myself um not just to challenge myself to work but also to provide much value so you can actually make this as an alternative education platform for yourself where you can wake up every morning uh check in with me during the daytime on any of my platforms on TikTok, on youtube on instagram on facebook on linkedin and learn something new every single day uh, and with that I say what I say all the time. Cheers, guys, and enjoy the new year. Happy New Year, and see you on the other side.